You love Halloween DIY decor on a budget, then you definitely come to the right place. I am so excited to bring you guys these Halloween Dollar Tree DIYs that I have for you. To start off, I'm going to take five packs of these stir sticks that I got from Home Depot at 97 cents a piece, and I'm going to start off by taking them out of the plastic. Then I'm just going to lay them out, and with my saw, I could only cut about three to four of them at a time. So I just kind of put them in a few different piles. I made a mark where the handle is because I'm going to take my DeWalt handheld saw, and I'm going to cut off the handles. All of my supplies that I can link for you guys in my Amazon shop is down below in the description box as well as the pinned comment. That way, if you're looking for a specific tool or anything that I'm able to link, you can find there. Once I had all of the handles cut off, I'm going to take my sander and I just sand off the edges and make sure they're super smooth. Now, if you can't tell already, I'm going to be making a crate. If you didn't know, you can make your own crates super simply um, just by taking stir sticks. And I start off with one of the stir sticks with the handle cut off and I lay that going long ways. And then I'm going to take another one. I'm going to butt it up against the other stir stick and I'm just going to mark how wide I want my crate to be. Once I'm satisfied with the width of my crate i'm just going to create two different lines the same exact size that way i can cut my sides at the same time using two stir sticks and cutting them into four pieces once i had all of my pieces cut now i said four you guys <laughs> you need three on each side so i needed six pieces all together and so once I had all of those cut, I just set them aside and now we're going to assemble this. So I'm going to glue the shorter piece to the longer piece with my weld bond as well as some hot glue. And we're just gonna start off with the bottom layer. So I just glue both the sides down and then I glue the fourth side to the smaller sides. Next, I'm going to take four of the longer stir sticks and I'm just going to start by gluing one side down with, once again, weld bond and hot glue. And I'm not going to keep saying that. Y'all just know that as I'm gluing, I'm using both just because weld bond is going to make sure that it stays together for a really long time. And then the hot glue is going to make sure that it sticks together immediately. So I just start with one of the ends, I glue that down, and then I continue with the other pieces, gluing them down as well to complete the bottom. And there you have it, you have the bottom completely done. Now I could have left this as is, however, I wanted mine, like I said, to be like a crate. So I'm gonna take these bamboo sticks that I get off Amazon, once again, linked down in my Amazon shop, and I'm just gonna start by holding that up to the side and kind of gauging how tall I want my crate to be. And what these are gonna do is going to help me to glue the rest of the pieces to my crate. So once I was satisfied with the height of my crate, then I'm just going to glue down my bamboo sticks, three in the front, three in the back, and two on each side. And once again, I glue that down with my glue mixture. So once I was completely done gluing down all of my bamboo sticks, and I really like these because they are super skinny. They're kind of like coffee stir sticks, but they're actually a lot more sturdy. If you did not know, bamboo is extremely sturdy. So that's why I like working with these. But once I had all of my bamboo sticks glued down, then we're going to start by adding the other pieces to my crate. So I just go ahead and glue on my bamboo sticks and then I lay down my stir sticks going all the way around doing one of the longer sides. And here you can see I started to 
put the side on with the numbers facing forward which honestly didn't matter in the end anyway because I'm going to be painting this so if you make that mistake don't worry about it you're going to paint over it anyway but I start with one of the longer sides then I'm going to do the smaller sides and then I'm going to complete it with the last one going all the way around and look how gorgeous this crate is i mean it literally looks like something you would grab from walmart and it honestly did not take me too long at all i just sanded that glue smooth and then i'm just going to give this a distress coat of my ink waverly chalk paint and i do go ahead and paint this entire thing outside as well as inside and on the bottom next I'm going to take these galvanized metal plaques from Dollar Tree and they actually have several different kinds these are the ones in the crafter square section and like I said I take three of them and I'm going to take my weld bond and I'm just going to glue these together. Now I start off by laying one on either side of my crate at the end. Then I'm going to take the third one and use it right in the middle of the other two to make one complete awning if you haven't figured out what this is going to be. Now I cannot stress the importance of making sure that this is set out to dry overnight. Now Weld Bond does dry pretty quickly however I have found that with these metal pieces it does take a little bit longer to dry so once I had them glued together I did hold them down with some Dollar Tree clamps I ended up using my bigger clamps in the end you'll see that here in just a minute but I do set that aside overnight to dry Next, I'm going to take this Dollar Tree sign, and I wanted the back to look finished, so I did just take some scrap contact paper, and I covered that entire back. Now, when I was doing this, the little wagon in the middle of the sign is raised. It's like a 3D piece, so originally, I was going to try to remove that wagon. You'll see that here in just a second. However, y'all, I don't know what they glued that wagon down with, but it did not want to come up even if I heated it and used a putty knife to try and pry it up off the sign. So I did just go ahead and cover over that with the contact paper. Next, I just used some scissors and cut off the excess contact paper as best as I could. And then once I had most of it cut away from the sign, then to just finish the edges smooth, I did use my sander. And what you're going to want to do is go from the back of this, or I, I guess it's the front of the sign, but it's going to be the back to us. So I just take my sander and I sand towards the other side and that's just going to sand off the excess contact paper. Next I'm going to take some lightweight spackling and I'm just going to cover up those holes. Once the lightweight spackling was completely dry, then I'm going to give this a distressed coat of my white Waverly chalk paint. I get these chip brushes from Home Depot. They are super inexpensive and I'm just going to start by taking some ink Waverly chalk paint on the end of my brush, dabbing off the excess and then dry brushing all the way around my sign as well as the entire sign itself. And as always, I always tell you guys, if you're not a fan of distressing or dry brushing, then you can totally skip this step. But I personally absolutely love it. So I tend to distress everything. So for the actual crate itself, I distress that as well with a huge chip brush from Home Depot and some white Waverly chalk paint all the way around my crate, focusing in on the corners. Thank you. 
Next, I'm going to take my Apothecary Transfer from Chalk Couture. And if you guys would like to get 40% off of everything on my chalk site, text my number on the screen, the word chalk, and I will send you over that link. Or if you guys just want to shop the Chalk Couture items that I used in this video, you can check the description box as well as the pinned comment. Y'all, I absolutely love Chalk Couture because it's super beginner friendly. Literally, my daughter, when she was five years old, could chalk like a pro. So I know that if she could do it, so can anybody. So I just go ahead and transfer that on with my black paste. And I cannot stress to you enough how important it is to make sure that you smooth your transfer down really, really well stir up your paste and then when you squeegee on your paste you want to make sure that you squeegee on with light to even pressure and when you pull back that transfer you want to pull it back nice and slow so once i had the apothecary part transferred on then i went ahead and transferred on some apo apothecary jars onto the right hand side and not only is Chalk Couture super easy, but the results are absolutely stunning. And I can promise you peeling back that transfer to reveal that super crisp image is never going to get old to you. And if you have tried Chalk and you feel the exact same way, let me know down in the comments that I am not alone. Next, I'm going to take these Halloween bats that are actually on clips. And I just took two of them, pulled them off the clips. I cut that piece that goes into the clip off so that these could sit a little bit more flat on my sign and then I just glued those to the top of my sign. Next I took a half of a foam skeleton head from Dollar Tree and I just used a smaller paintbrush to go over all of the details on my skeleton face with my ink Waverly chalk paint and then once I did the face I did go ahead and add a little bit more details to my skeleton. I then just hot glued that to the left hand corner of my sign. Now we're going to take the little awning and as I told you before that I ended up adding my bigger clamps to this so that way I could stand it up and let it dry. Once it was completely dry overnight, I cannot stress to you enough how important that is. If you use hot glue, it's going to come apart. If you use super glue, I don't know why, but actual super glue did not work for me. So my best bet was the weld bond. And like I said, when I left it overnight, y'all, this thing was not going anywhere. So I took it off the clamps and now I'm going to use my square dowel rods always linked in my Amazon shop. And I'm just going to start by holding one of the dowel rods into one of the back corners and then holding up my awning to see how tall I wanted it. Once I was satisfied with the height, I used my miter shears again linked in my Amazon shop. I did get these off of Timu, but y'all, I don't mess with Timu anymore. Um, that's a story for another day, but I don't mess with Timu anymore. So I will link these particular ones that give you the exact angles in my Amazon shop. And I just cut that on a 45 degree angle. I held up a second piece and all I had to do was cut a straight line for the second back piece. Once I had both of the second back pieces done, I once again held up my awning and then I marked another dowel rod for the shorter pieces in the front. And once again, once I was satisfied with the angle, then I used my miter shears once again to cut two pieces in the front. Again, they're going to be shorter than the back pieces. I then just sanded the edges smooth and painted all of my dowel rods with my ink Waverly chalk paint. And then once that was dry, then I dry brushed those as well with my white Waverly chalk paint all the way around my dowels. Now the easiest way to paint dowels is just to put them right up against each other as if they were one big piece and then flip them around as you paint the next side. So once those were completely dry, now we're going to glue these down once again with a combination of my weld bond and some hot glue. So I just start by putting a couple dabs of my weld bond in the corners and then I also put a dab of hot glue right below and above each of those dabs 
and then glued down all of the pieces in each corner. Next, I'm going to glue down the awning just by doing the exact same thing, putting one little dab of my weld bond on the top of each dowel, as well as one dab of hot glue, and then just laying my awning right on top of those dowel rods. And that completes the entire little stand. And y'all, if you don't like my particular DIY, you can just use the base of this project and make it your own. So for the next part, I wanted to doll up the front of my crate a little bit. And I had these cutouts from Chalk Couture. They're called Chalkable Shapes. And basically, they just go along with a particular transfer. So for this one, I took the transfer. I cut out the pieces that I wanted. Now, this comes with a witch hat, a witch, a super scary guy. I don't know what you want to call him. Let me know in the comments if there is a particular name for this guy and it also came with this little frame so I ended up using the little guy and I just took out the pieces I laid the coordinating transfer on to my chalkable shapes and then I transferred on my image with my black chalk paste Now these are a little tricky to peel up that transfer. So all you're gonna do is hold it in the middle and then kind of pull it to one side and then you can go ahead and just use your fingernail to hold tight to the edge and then pull that transfer back nice and slowly and look how gorgeous this turned out. I made sure that the pieces were super dry and then on top of the spooky guy's hat, I'm gonna transfer on this little tiny skeleton. I just thought that was so cute and added a little bit of detail to that plain piece. Once again, I peel back my transfer to reveal that gorgeous little skeleton. Once I was completely done with my chalkable shapes, I'm just going to lay that down into the middle of my crate. I use my tape measure to make sure that it's nice and even in the middle. And then I glue that down with some hot glue and then glue my little man into the middle of that frame. I did make sure to put a little line at the top and the bottom once I had it nice and square just to make sure when I glue this down that I glue it in the correct place. Next I'm going to take some bamboo sticks and cut them down a little bit smaller because when I glued down my awning I didn't realize that a little bit was like away from the dowel rod or I should say a little bit higher than the dowel rod so I just glued those pieces down to make sure that when I glued these next bamboo sticks down that it would be flat instead of kind of on an angle if that makes sense and I just cut a piece in half because I'm going to glue my sign to that and to make sure everything blended in I did go ahead and paint half of those pieces black and then I'm going to take this skeleton from Dollar Tree. I take it out of the packaging and then just kind of straighten it up and I cut the tag off. Next, I'm gonna pull back the little hat because it was a little bit too far on his face. You couldn't really see the head. And once I was satisfied with the way it looked, I kind of put that to the side and you'll see here in a minute how I attach that. Next, I'm going to take my sign and put it up against the bamboo sticks and then put a bead of hot glue on the back of the sign and glue it to the bamboo sticks. And then I just reinforce that with some hot glue from the back. I made sure that that was super dry and look how gorgeous this is. Next, I'm going to take some antique wax by Waverly and a tiny brush and I just kind of go around the edges and then I also go on the top of the sign as well to make it look old and weathered and rusty. 
And there was no specific technique for this. I just kind of went around some of the edges and in the middle until my eyes were happy. And I would suggest you to do the same. Don't be too hard on yourself. This is supposed to be spooky. So I didn't really worry about the exact placement. I just went until I was happy with the way it looked. Next, I'm going to take some floral moss and just arrange that on the top. I glued little pieces down here and there. Once again, no technique, no specific spot. I just did it until I was happy to make it look old and spooky. And I also did that to the crate as well. Next, I'm going to take my little skeleton from the back. And the arms are actually... Um, like metal on the inside so you can bend them so i bent the hands around the back dowel rod and then i hung the skeleton by the little loop at the top of his head to the back of my sign that way you could see him from the front and i also glued his hands around each dowel on the back now you could see through the dressing of this skeleton so it was much longer than my piece so I just cut the excess off of the end and then glued that to the back of his shoulders that way you couldn't see through the skeleton and look how gorgeous this is once again um, I am so excited for this project and for you guys to see the end result but next I took this happy Halloween sign and originally I was going to glue the potion sign on the front as well but I decided against that so I did use the spider and I'll show you that here in just a second so I set that aside next I'm going to take a ton of these Dollar Tree potion jars and I'm going to take my potion transfers and I'm just going to transfer on a few of the images to these potion jars Now, because these jars are a non-porous surface, sometimes transfers stick a little too well to non-porous surfaces like glass, plastic, stuff like that. So I did go ahead and fuzz my transfers a little bit before using them on the plastic, meaning that I just, I actually have a fuzzing cloth, but you don't need that. You can just use your shirt or your pants. Just make sure you don't put too, too much fuzz because you don't want the fuzz to stick to it and ruin them. It's just enough that when you transfer on the non-porous surface, it will come off easily. So I set those jars aside and then I'm going to use these cute little lab flasks from Dollar Tree. And I did use two packs, so four all together. And then I used my gel food coloring. I would... I would definitely um, vote against the gel food coloring. It's really not that easy. It does dissolve eventually, but if you have regular food coloring, I would definitely go with that. But I only had the gel, so I did put a little bit of the gel food coloring at the bottom of each flask, add water, and then I glued the cork on the inside of the jar. That way they would not go anywhere and I didn't have a huge mess. So I set those aside and then I just started adding all of the little, um, like this one was spider venom or something like that. I don't know exactly, but I knew it had something to do with spiders. So I added a few plastic spiders from Dollar Tree into that one. This one looks like eyeballs on the front. So I just used some wooden beads. You can't even tell that they're beads. I personally think in the water that they did look like eyeballs. So I added those to that jar. And then for the crushed bones, I did just take a skeleton from Dollar Tree. I cut off some of the limbs and I added that to my jar as well. And then for this bigger potion jar, I also did the same thing with the bones. I just cut them up and stuck them in the jar as well. But for this one, I ended up putting the skeleton head and hands and all kinds of stuff. So make these your own. You can have fun with this, add whatever you would like, but these are just the items that I had on hand. I did go ahead and mix up some green food coloring and I added that to the bigger jar as well and then added water and some hot glue around the corks and the lid and put those on my jars as well. Now, 
Next, I'm going to take three different strands of lights from Dollar Tree, one purple strand, one orange strand, and then I also found some with little tiny purple bats. I thought that they were so cute, so I just started by taking them out of the package and adding two AA batteries to each. Next, I'm going to take the Super Glow Spider Web. I actually got this from Big Lots, and I'm just going to take a little bit out of the package, cut some of it down, and then I just added some of these spider webs all the way around my project once again to make it look spooky and very festive. I then added a plastic spider over the left hand corner spider webs and then the spider that I took off of that sign a few minutes ago, I did glue that to the right hand side. You just couldn't see it. This was a really hard angle to film with this bigger piece so bear with me just a little bit. I'm doing the best I could at getting everything in the shot. So to decorate the inside, I took a paper bag from Dollar Tree and I just crumpled that up and put it on the bottom to make sure it fit. And then I took this spooky cloth, once again I got from Big Lots. I knew I had some from Dollar Tree. Dollar Tree does sell the, the spooky cloth, but y'all, for the life of me, I could not find it. And I just arranged that, or I wrapped it around the paper bag from Dollar Tree. I put that inside my project. I then arranged the lights underneath the cloth but still at the top so you could see it. I also glued the bat lights around the edge of my crate and I put the battery packs in the back so you couldn't see it. And then I just arranged all of my jars in the inside. I put a little bit of that spider webbing over some of the jars. I took the skeleton that I took the head off. I put that in the right hand corner and put some jars around it and then also put some spider web on it. And that was it for this project. Look how gorgeous this turned out. I absolutely love it and I cannot wait to hear what you guys think of this project down in the comment section below. Hey friends, I'm so excited you're here. If you are enjoying this video, don't forget to share this out. Subscribe if you haven't already. I would love to have you become part of my crafty family. That way you don't miss any decor coming up. With that being said, I'm so grateful you're here and let's jump back into today's video. Next, I'm gonna take this candle holder from Dollar Tree as well as this little spider dish and I took the tags off of both and then I glued my candlestick to the bottom of the spider and literally all that was so easy. That was it for this project. I put a pumpkin candle in the middle that I got from Dollar Tree. I arranged some of the spider web around that candle and then added a fake spider. And that was it for this project. Now, I feel like I could have decorated this a little bit better. Let me know, what would you guys put in this spider dish? This is another super easy DIY. So I take this small wood round from Dollar Tree and these paper plates, and I'm gonna start by taking the tag off of the wood round as well as the hanger. Next, I'm gonna use my chalkboard paint to give it a distress coat, making sure to cover the edges as well. Now, if you've been around, y'all know that I am super impatient, so I do use my blow dryer to make sure that that paint is super dry. And then I'm gonna take these paper plates from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna cut out the middle of this paper plate, and then I'm going to glue the paper plate down to the center of my wood round with a disappearing purple glue stick. Now because paper plates are pretty thick, I'm going to make sure that I glue this down with a lot more of my glue stick than I normally would. Now 
To cover up the edge of the plate, I'm just going to run a bead of hot glue around that edge and then I'm going to take some jute from Dollar Tree and just go all the way around the paper plate. Next, I'm gonna hold up my sign and take some hot glue, and I'm just gonna glue all the way around the edges, and I'm going to make them look like a dripping candle. That's kind of where I got this idea from. The plate has a bunch of candles that are burning, so I thought that it would be really cool to have drips all the way around the sign. So I just go pretty slow, and I go a little bit more heavy in some spots and then a little lighter in others just to make these drips look as realistic as possible. And then once I went all the way around the sign and I was satisfied with the way that it looked, I'm going to take my pewter rub and buff and a very tiny brush and I'm just going to go all the way around those drips so that way you could really see them. Once those were completely covered, I'm going to take my gold rub and buff and I'm just going to go around the edges of the drips to just give it some dimension and detail. Now, I personally like mixed metals. It actually is a thing. My best friend is a jewelry designer and I always said before that I did not like gold and silver together. And then he let me know that that's actually a thing. Mixed metals is like a fashion statement or something. And ever since then, I really actually liked it. So again, I personally like the way it looks, but if you do not, then you can totally use the gold or the pewter. It's totally up to you. To finish this sign, I took a spider from Dollar Tree. I cut off the piece that went in the clip just like we did the bats earlier. I glued that down to the side and then used some more gold rub and buff to go over the details of my spider so that way you could see it. And that was it for this DIY. I can't wait to hear which DIY in this video is your favorite. For the last and final DIY, I'm going to take these hands from Dollar Tree. I really don't even know what they're called, but I just took those out of the package as well as the spooky lantern from Dollar Tree and this wooden shape from Dollar Tree as well. So I start by taking the plastic tag off of the wooden shape and I just give that a coat of my ink Waverly chalk paint and once that was completely dry, I dry brush all the way around the edges as well as on top of the sign. I made sure it was completely dry. And then I'm gonna add two AAA batteries to my lantern. I always like to turn it on to make sure it's working before I move on to the next step. So once I saw that it was working, I then took one of the hands and I just bent it right in the middle. Now, you can heat this up to bend it more and then let it like, um, let it cool down so that it's a little bit more bent but I just didn't have time to do that so I bent it as much as I possibly could and then I just glued that to the bottom with some of my weld bond as well as some hot glue so I also want to mention that this did want to keep falling over so what I did was I glued the bottom with weld bond and hot glue and a little bit around the bottom I let that dry and then I just added layers of hot glue until it stayed in place. To cover up that hot glue, I just took more of that spider web, wrapped it around the hand, and then I just glued that down into place. I added a spider to make it look more spooky. And that was it, you guys. I added my lantern to my hand, and I absolutely love this DIY. I can't wait to make a different version in the future. As always, you guys, let me know down in the comments which DIY was your favorite. I'm curious if you guys are over Halloween DIYs or if you would like to see more. I actually would love to make more, but I'm not sure if you guys are ready for fall DIYs or if you want to see more Halloween. So with that being said, I want you guys to know how much I love and appreciate every single one of you. Don't forget to share this out. Subscribe if you haven't already. It really helps my channel to grow. And if 
if nobody has told you today, you are absolutely stunning. You are worthy. You are gorgeous. You can do literally anything you set your mind to. Coming from an addict who is nine years sober, y'all, if I can do it, you can do it as well. And with that being said, I always like to share that I recently lost 80 pounds of pure fat and I actually put together a weight loss guide for you guys. So if you're interested in my weight loss guide, check the link in the description box as well as the pinned comment and it's all in that link as well as you guys can always text me the word guide and I'll get that over to you as well and all of that information is down below. With that being said, I love y'all so much. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye. Check out the videos that are popping up here to your left while you're waiting on my next upload or join the DIY fam here to your right.